Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, something uh, brand new and exciting. Uh, it's a new type of function. It's a new type of function that we have in math. It's called logarithms. Um, the logarithmic is the adjective form of logarithm. Uh, you'll often hear uh, the word logs, logarithm, abbreviates the word log or logs. In fact, uh, moving forward, I'll just call them logs. All right, what is a logarithmic function? Well, logarithmic functions are inverses. That's right, inverses of exponential functions. Remember, the inverses means they undo each other. So if you want to undo an exponential, you'll use a logarithm because they are what? They are inverses. Now, logs are useful uh, when I have an exponential equation uh, to help me solve for x. Um, because don't forget that in exponential equations, your variable, in most cases x, he's going to be in the exponent. Now, you guys just did a project that was probably a little frustrating for you because to find the actual value for x, you had to just use the guess and check method. Well, we know in algebra we don't like guessing. Uh, algebra is more about uh, procedure and method so that we can get the right answer in an exact way every time. Well, in this uh, chapter, or in this section, we're going to learn how logarithms can help me solve for this variable that's in the exponent. In essence, logs get the exponent, uh, the variable out of the exponent. Okay, now to do this, you have to know this one thing. Log form is just another way of writing exponential form, okay? It's another way of writing exponential form. All right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, suppose I have an exponential uh, equation like this. A equals B to the X power, where my answer to this exponent is A, the base of my exponent is b, and the exponent of the exponential form is x. Well, to change this to log form right here, here's what I'm going to do. Well, log form is an equation just like exponential form, so I need an equal sign. Log form has to have the word log written into it. So I always write the word log first, and then I do this. I take the base of my exponential. Well, the base number was b. This base number of my exponential will become the base number of my log. It's usually written a little bit smaller, and it's also written as a subscript of the word log. Now, the next part is this. I take the exponent of the exponential, the x. He will switch places with my answer that I was getting. The x becomes the answer, and the answer comes over, and he becomes above the base now. This A stands for a word that I've told you. What word did I tell you that is? I don't know. Yes, you do know. No, I don't. What word does this A stand for? I don't know, Mr. Kong. I've told you what that A stands for. What am I doing with myself right now? I'm having an argument. This is called the argument of your logarithm. Okay. So ultimately, here's what we're saying. To go from exponential form to logarithmic form, you take the base of your exponent. That will always be the same as the base of your log. You'll always be below the, the below number. And then the answer and the exponent just switch places with each other. The answer becomes the argument, and the exponent becomes the answer. Okay? So if I take a look at a... An example like this, does everybody agree that 8 equals 2 to the third power? Well, that's an exponent, and that's true. 2 to the third power is 8. If I wanted to write this in log form, that would say, well, let's see here. I need an equal sign. I need the word log. Notice, I always write the word log on the same side that the base of my exponent was located. Well, my base is 2, so that 2 will become the base of my log. Written a little bit smaller. That's too small. And below the word log. The 8, which was the answer, will become the argument. And the exponent, the 3, will become a normal size 3 that is just the answer now. So what this says is log base 2 of 8 equals 3. Okay, again, we read this as log base 2 of 8 equals 3. 
And that's how you read that, long base 2 of 8. Okay? What if I wanted to go backwards? What if I had log base 3 of 81 equals 4, and I wanted to rewrite this in exponential form? Well, let's see. To go backwards into exponential form, what's on the base of my log? Well, it's this 3 right here, isn't it? Right? So this 3 will become the base of my exponent. Notice that the word log has to disappear when you go to exponential form. There's my equal sign. Well, in this case, now, the argument will go back and become the answer, and the answer will come back and become the exponent. Remember that the argument and the answer always have to switch places with the, each other, okay? Uh, flipping sides of where they were at with their base. So log base 3 of 81 is equal to 8, is the same thing as 81 equals 3 to the fourth power. All right, so let's take a look. How can I, uh, how can I now uh, use this to do some problems? Well, let's take a look at some problems that I've got here. The evaluating logs. Again, we need to get, be able to go backwards and forwards, so let's get used to going from log form, which we're maybe not so comfortable with, to exponential form. Suppose I have this expression. I say simplify log base 3 of 27. Well, if you think about this, I want to set this equal to some variable x. I'm going to now rewrite this in exponential form. In exponential form, this would say 3 to the x power equals 27. Well, does that make sense how I got that ex the, the, this exponential form? The base of the log is the base of my exponential, and the answer and the exponent, or the answer and the argument, might switch places with each other to get me to there. Okay. Now, if you think about this, this says 3 to what power is 27? Well, we know that 3 to the third power is 27, so that missing answer must be a 3. So 3 to the third is 27. What if you didn't like uh, just common sense in it? Right? Well, you could have also done it this way. Watch how I'm going to do it again. I'm going to say, all right, 3 to what power is 27? Well, here's the rule. If the base on the left is a 3, if I can take this bigger number, 27, which is 27 to the first power, if I can make these two bases match, what you what, what, what can assume? Well, let's see here. If 27, if that's the same thing as 3 to the third power, doesn't 3 to the x power have to equal 3 to the third power? Well, since these bases match, I can pretty much just ignore them and just focus on my exponents. Well, if the bases match, then the exponents have to be equal, so this exponent x must equal 3. Take a look at a more complicated example and how this will be useful. I'm going to set this equal to x. I'm going to say 4 to what power equals 8. Well, no, uh, no exponent off the top of my head makes sense. Uh, 4 to the first is 4. 4 to the second is 16. Uh, I know it has to be somewhere between uh, 4 to the first. So uh, the x, this x has to be between a 1 and a 2. So what I'm going to do here? I'm going to take a look at this 8, the bigger, the bigger uh, base. Can I break him down into a 4? No, I can't break him down to a 4. So what can I break him down into? I can break him down into 2 to the third power. Well, can I break this 4 down into the same base of 2? Sure. Isn't that 2 to the second power? But he already had an x, so shouldn't that be 2 to the 2x power? That's the same thing as 4 to the x. Well, now that I've made the bases match, I can pretty much ignore them and just write an equation from my exponents. 2x equals 3, so x must be 3 over 2 power. So that missing answer was 3 over 2. Now, let's see if this makes sense just as a check. What is 4 to the 3 over 2 power? Well, don't forget that this little 2 on the bottom means square root 4. What's the square root of 4? It's a 2, and 2 cubed is 8. Oh, look, they match. That must be right. right. Let's take a look at another example. This is log base 1 64th of 4. I start off by setting it equal to x. I write it in exponential form. Uh, but now look at this issue. In this problem, my base is a fraction, but my answer is a whole number of 4. Well, what kind of exponents can I, what can I do to an exponent to get rid of a fraction? Or, in other words, or, or I could also create a fraction. Couldn't I use a negative exponent 
Isn't this the same thing as 64 to the negative x power? Does everyone understand that? Good. Well, so I've got 64 to the negative x power is, is, is equal to 4. Well, I look at my bigger base. Can I break a 64 down into a, uh, a base of 4? Sure I can. 64 is the same thing as 4 to the third power. So this becomes 4 to the negative 3x power equals 4 to the first power. Does everyone see how I got that? Think about it. Well, now that the bases match, I can say, oh, focus on my exponents. Negative 3x must equal 1, so x equals negative 1 third. So my, my, uh, my answer to that logarithm is negative 1 third. Hopefully uh, we get this, and uh, I'll talk to you later.